Herzlich willkommen hier bei Moshpit Passion auf YouTube. Ich bin der Kajo. Ich habe hier heute einen besonderen Gast für euch und zwar Trip Eisen, welchen ihr unter anderem von Steady X, Dope, Murder Dolls und, und, und auch kennt. Wir werden hier ein bisschen über die aktuellen Projekte sprechen. Ähm, das, was er geplant hat, was noch kommen wird und die Dinge, die offen im Raum stehen. Daher seid gespannt. So viel kann ich euch ähm, verraten. Seid mir nicht böse, dass wir jetzt nun im Englischen übergehen. So ja, yeah. Trip Eisen here at Moshpit Passion Magazine in Germany. Germany. Thank you very much for having us to talk about your projects and all those things. Hello, Trip. Nice to have you here. Hello. Glad to be here. So, um, yeah, I want to start directly with the first chapter of our interview. And this is your own podcast, actually. I saw uh, a couple of interviews and uh, was also reading all these, let me say, PR statements from your agent uh, that you are planning to release um, yeah, your own podcast. And maybe you can give us an insight. What will you yeah show the people the world in this podcast yeah basically the podcast is going to be a limited uh kind of like episodic it's going to be a limited run maybe 10 to 12 episodes so it's not going to be this ongoing thing so people can have an expectation that i'm going to be doing this and maybe catch it while i'm doing it because i want to do each episode will cover a topic like the machine album the uh, Shadow Zone album, the making of the Shadow Zone album and the tour, and then um, different aspects, memories of Wayne. You know, then I might do also uh, an episode about the Murder Dolls and Joey Jordison because of the memory of Joey and all that he did and, and uh, my relationship with him and all that we did forming the Murder Dolls. And also an episode about Dope because Dope was a big part of launching my career back and uh, I'll do an episode about Dope. So it'll be like 10 to 12 episodes. I might do like If it gets extensive, I might do like two episodes about the Machine album because that's when I joined the band and there was so much with the comic book and the uh, Queen of the Damned and all the details of the Machine. And, you know, so there's a lot. Uh, some things are a little bit deeper. So maybe Shadow Zone and the Machine will have two episodes, but then I'll do an episode about Dope, episode about mm -hmm. Murder Dolls, episode about my past and, you know, getting my life back together, an episode about the other projects that I'm working on, Face Without Fear and this Project X, which is the, uh, the Static X, you know, music that I'm working on, that I did start working on with those guys a couple of years ago. So yeah, each episode will be about a topic. I'm going to have guests, people that I'm, I have relationships with still, people that are good close friends of mine that worked with Wayne, um, you know, crew guys and uh, personal assistants that work with Wayne and Tara Ray. Uh, work with me and guitar techs and different people who were involved. I mean, uh, I don't want to say too much because there's some people haven't committed to mm. be a guest, but I have a, a list of like 30 people I'm shooting for. Uh, and I want to bring people in to give a perspective. So it's not just, hey, this is just trip talking. This is just trips. I'm going to give opinions of other people that knew Wayne intimately, that knew people uh, involved, people that mm. were involved with the dope era, people that were involved, maybe murdered off to some degree. So You know, uh, I think it's gonna, it's going to be great because like Wednesday 13, I, I love what he's doing. He's still very active and, uh, you know, and the guy. So it's like it's a good it's, it means a lot to me. Each era of my life, each project was special. Each project I, I worked on creatively. I worked on music and it's just it's it's means it means a lot to me. So it's like I got something to say about each one. Um, and how deep will, um, let me say, the episodes um, go. I mean, for instance, um, when somebody is saying Trip Eisen, everybody would say in the first place, hey, he played in Static X Dope Murder Dolls. And then the second uh, thing is, oh, there happened something many, many years ago back he went in jail for. And let me say this topic, why you went in jail um, for. Will you also talk about that and what the reasons were and open questions or something like that? Or is it something that you say, hey, maybe I use this topic for something different and not the podcast because the podcast which you are doing is more about the music and the art? I might, I might actually, like I'm planning to dedicate one episode about that. So it's like a little bit, so the sensitive topics, I might dedicate one episode. I did talk about it 
in a few podcasts already. I feel like I covered it, so I don't want to retread too much. But I, I might. It depends on um, the person. I might have every episode. There's going to be one episode of just me. I'm going to have somebody with me uh, just to bounce ideas and, and have a conversation. It's going to be more of a conversation mm. uh, going on. So right now I'm planning to do one episode about that. I'm not completely sure. It depends. There, there's a few podcasts I'm, I'm considering to cover that topic a little more sensitively, but, but yeah, I'm right now I'm, I'm planning on making one, maybe one episode about that to kind of like, you know, people want to know a little bit deeper, but I did, I did do a podcast recently, uh, uh, Chuck shoot and he did get a little deep into that so I like I, I can refer people to that podcast because he did I didn't forbid any questions he just asked whatever he wanted to and I I went uh went went just off the cuff so I feel like mm. that that's kind of a a pretty good um you know pretty good insight of, of what I went through and stuff so but yeah the podcast basically I'm, I'm excited to do it I'm thinking as far as like you, you said how extensive Something about ex the word extensive also means, am I going to be there talking for three hours or I plan to keep it short? I want to make it, uh, the podcast maybe 45 minutes tops, you know, just to, so we don't go on and on. If it's good, if it's successful, maybe I'll continue and do more episodes and go in more detail. But um, for now, I want to keep it kind of short, maybe maybe real tight to the points and, and uh, you know, so people keep their interest there so it's not a long-winded uh type podcast like it's more like you know um, short, nice do we have an idea when the first episode will be launched yeah probably in two years now <laughs> 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 it's taking so long i, I plan mm. to do it or i mean i'm already late i, I mm. plan to have it done a month ago but um there's certain things i'm just want to make sure it's right i want to make sure i have a good you know professional uh, presentation, you know, like yourself, you know? <laughs> mm. something that looks really professional. So it's it probably, I'm hoping within a month it'll be out. So I'll, I'll do a press release about the first show. So you'll get a little, you know, but I, the other thing, uh, the part of the platform is going to be my website. There's going to be a tripeisen.com. So that's might even be launched next week. It's been a website I've been developing for a while, but that might be launched next week, hopefully. Um, and then it'll it'll grow from there. But the but podcast will be on my website. It'll be on, you know, as many platforms I can, YouTube and Skype, mm. and the different things. I, I'm not exactly sure. I got I got like a podcast expert helping me about how exactly what platforms it's going to be on and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm excited. But yeah, each each episode is going to be a topic. And I think people will be drawn to it. So, so they, they know it's not like, Hey, let's tune into trip. We don't know what he's going to be talking about. It'll be each episode. will have a title mm -hmm. right now. I think it's going to be called the dope on static X podcast. So I'm going to play on words, the dope on static X mm -hmm. dope. You know what dope means, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. The dope means like the skinny, like the gossip, the, the insight, the dope. Yeah. That's a, like, it's term. It's, it's a pun. So the dope. Right. It's like, so dope is a banner. So the dope on static X. So maybe I'll have the dope on dope will be one episode, the dope on murder dolls, the dope on static X. And, uh, but, um, you know, the sensitive, the, the heartfelt episodes will be about Wayne static, the memory of Wayne, an episode about in the murder dolls, the memory of Joey, because, and, and Ben Graves as well, who passed on, you know, God bless him. And, and it's like to talk about, you know, I didn't know Ben that well, but you know, I brought him into the band and I got to know him. So to talk about these guys, because everybody in, in the band, I have, I have good memories. Yeah, there's some stressful things and there's always conflict, but each member of Dope, each member of Murder Dolls, each member of Static X, I got mm. good memories and, and I want to talk about a lot of good things too. So, so um, yeah, you mentioned a couple of interesting things like, like the website, um, which is coming up hopefully next week. And uh, what else? I hope it's okay to ask about that, about um, because our interview will also be launched in a couple of days, four days. It's Wednesday. On Wednesday, it will be um, online. I don't know how uh, deep you can uh, go and uh, say a little bit more about the website. For instance, uh, what can the people see on, on the website besides pictures or media is there something like i don't know um, how you played songs back in the days of dope static x and murder dolls or 
it's going to be exci exciting because obviously websites are kind of outdated now. But like this website that I want to do, I want to make it like an old school website too. So I, I want to have in the website like th that. That's a good idea. Like how I played songs and stuff. But I'm not. I'm not that much of a gearhead. Like I'm not like oh, I, this is all my gear I use and here's exactly how I played the songs. I'm like, I, I think it'd be cool to do that. I, so I might actually do that. But I have, I have some interesting other interests I had. Like I used to photograph bands mm -hmm. back in the day i got some classic photos and i want to make trips photography mm -hmm. like i took pictures when i was in high school of bands i went to see kiss rush i got pictures of overkill from 86 to 87 i got pictures of slayer in 86 that i took myself flash, some of the flash pictures you know rain and blood tour um i got pictures from iron maiden uh, peace of mind tour i took i got pictures of Def leopard 83 uh, pictures i took when i was a kid i sneak sneaking a camera in when you couldn't take <laughs> pictures sneaking in my pants you know and i got i got an amazing picture of joe elliott mm. just like with his british flag shirt just i just nailed a picture clear as a bell and it's like awesome just, so i got some interesting pictures of kiss ramones overkill oh just amazing so i'm like i think i might do that like uh, trips photography then you go and you'll see each band's logo his iron maiden pictures mm -hmm. judas priest pictures overkill slayer mm -hmm. and then even some more obscure artists like i even saw i like, had great white when they opened up for judas priest on the defenders of faith tour this mm -hmm. it's a lot of little weird obscure bands so it'd be interesting motley crew loudness wow. motley crew with i got shouted the devil motley crew live pictures i took myself uh, some of them are a little yeah. like rainy but they're still cool there's a vibe there you can see them in their heyday and that I pictures that I took. So I'm excited. So that's nice. that's one little aspect. But then mm. also all the t-shirts. I'm I have a lot of t-shirts I wore over the years to express certain things like Ayn Rand, the philosopher, the Russian philosopher that I love. So like it'll be trips t-shirts and like the like all the different t-shirts that I wore, like the overkill, man of war, mm. uh, slayer and, and different times that I wore these t-shirts. Even back in the 80s, my hair metal days, I was wearing man of war and slayer shirts back then. Mm. So there's this theme through all my career of like always like i'm wearing certain i wouldn't just wear any band shirt there's only certain yeah. bands mm. what i found interesting is that you are very active and uh, doing music and but what did you do let me say 15 years ago um, i don't know because i mentioned earlier we are germ uh, magazine and uh, when you came up let me say in the in the music world it was um, yeah with your actual band but um, yeah what did you do before that are you were you still in the in the music business or were you like no i'm completely out i do some completely different and then um i know that you reconnected with uh, static X, static x members but what what you do during the last 15 years before reconnecting with music but i don't know if you still was right, active yeah. but yeah i've talked about yes i call it like the quiet years you know i mm. kind of like uh i was off the grid but i was still i was going to shows i was reconnecting with friends and and people that I, I used to play with and um so i was still going to shows i was still writing music straight through all those years i got like every year catalog i wrote music from 08 09 2010 2011 2012 all those years and i was i was still playing music i was my i got married and my wife at the time uh she was a singer so we would you know work on music together we just like mess around a couple of original things but do cover songs like playing having some fun with some cover songs with other musicians i played out throughout the years and then so like yeah the quiet years like 2007 8 9 2009 i got married 2010 but then 2011 i started to talk to the guys in rough house and we, we contemplated reuniting and playing our old songs that was fun then 2012 um, i had already reconnected with edsel dope and then 2012 he invites me to join dope so like I get this offer to join Dope and go play live shows in Dope 2012 2013. So um, it didn't work out. It was, it's, I'll tell the story in more detail in my pious part, but it, it just it didn't quite work out because it's different reasons. But but the offer was there and and he offered me to be part of the band and, and be his business partner and actually get get more involved. And in it just I couldn't do it at the time, but it was it was a great offer and I appreciate that because we were we worked together on songs like you know die mother after die you know that song, mm. dope song. sure like, like know, so that, records 
Yeah, so that I mean that that song is like the biggest dope song, and I'm I'm the co-writer of that. So it was my demo. It was my that that song was my demo that he sang over, and we worked we uh, collaborated on that song, and that's like like the biggest dope song, and it's exciting, you know. And then we wrote another song called Stop. Um, so yeah. at least and I at least I got to write. It was fun, you know, being able to write and dope. So then, um, 2013, 2014, Wayne passes away. You know, it's like. Mm. And I had hopes to reconcile with Wayne. I went to see him play. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't go backstage and talk. I talked to a couple of the guys uh, and they were like, you should come on the bus and say hello to Wayne. And I'm like, I don't think it's the right time. And uh, I, I regret that, you know, because I would have went on the bus and talked to Wayne and his wife. And I, I regret not doing that. I just felt it wasn't the right time. I was... Mm. I just went to see him play. I wrote him a note and I said, here, give Wayne this note and just say, hey, it's great to see you. And I'm glad you're still doing it. And, and I wish you well. And apparently he saw the note and he was like, oh, Trip was here. And he, the, the guy who gave him the note, the tour manager, who's a really good friend of mine, um, Royal Jensen. And he gave Wayne the note and he said, oh, yeah, Wayne looked at it and he, he, he took it. He was like, wow, Wayne, Trip was here. You know, so I've, now I regret not going on the bus mm. and talking to him because like he it sounded like he would have been cool with me talking and stuff. So mm. I talked to his guitar player and stuff, but, but so I, and I reconnected with Ken J mm. Campos and I started going to see Tony play and soul fly and mm. fear factory. I'm hanging out with the guys and going to different shows and, and uh, everybody's, you know, it was cool. And it, it was nice seeing everybody again, you know, Cole mm. chamber and fear factory and the bands back in the day prong and, and seeing all these bands. Mm. And, uh, Wednesday 13, I went to see, and, and Edsel invited me out to see Dope in like 2008, talking about going back, 2008, my friend says, Edsel wants you to come out, please come out to the show, and, you know, went out to see Dope play in 2008, so that's mm. that's before the No Regrets album, that's like, they were on American Apathy at the time, tour, 2008, yeah. so I'm on the bus, saying hello to Virus, and Angel, the drummer at the time, and tr the other guy, Trip, there's the other Trip, mm. it's Dope, they Trip, Trip it, and I was like, yeah. Trip? Uh, virus angel and Edsel like, come in the back and we, we had a great conversation and Edsel was like how you doing man and he was he was so down to earth and heartfelt I got he had nothing to gain from me he just yeah. wanted, wanted to see me I was just you know getting my life back together so you know so I made all these reconnections so those quiet mm. years, your point the quiet years you know I was still rebuilding relationship mm. I mean it wasn't even I wasn't even quote my cat <laughs> I wasn't even, quote, rebuilding for, like, the sake of rebuilding. It was just, like, what was felt natural. Like, I'm out, I, I want to see my friends. I want to see people I play with. It wasn't, I wasn't trying to make connections. Like, hey, I'm trying to get back in the business. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, just laying low, working on music. And then the offer came from Edsel. I didn't, like, hey, dude, I, I'm trying to get back. He called me. I said, dude, yep. why don't you come back and play with Dope? Not one mention about my past or the negative things of my past. Edsel mm -hmm. was just, like, Come play with dope. Mm -hmm. I was. I didn't even say. Well, what are you gonna? How are you gonna deal with the? Pro He's just like, just come play with dope. Mm -hmm. Not one concern about. It. So mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff going on is a lot of. Uh, it's play acting and stuff, but but it's like, but he he was really cool, and I appreciated that. So the the the, the quiet years happened, but then mm -hmm. 20, 2016, I reunited with Rough House, my my old hair metal band, Rough House. Those guys supported me any reservations and then we did a show and without the original like the one original member didn't want to do it so i was like i don't want to do it if he's not there and then i compromised and i did it and helped get me going but 2016 is also when i went to tony and said let's do static x and he was like well i have some reservations he told me his reservations but then he goes okay let's do it the rest is history they're back you know but, yeah. but that initial phone call is what led to everything going on mm. And I'll go into detail in my podcast about all the mm. little details of step by step what happened. But but it, it, it was like that was really encouraging to me. It, it helped my self-esteem. Like, oh, I'm playing with these guys. I'm working with Tony. Edsel made me an offer. I'm like working with all my ex-band members. And everybody's treating me really, you know, with, with you know, um, what's the word? They were treating me with understanding, support, and love, really. I mm. mean. It was a true, true friendships. I mean, what's a friendship? Mm. 
these guys today, they're like, oh, was I your friend? You know, what, what more is a friendship than talking about family, health issues, financial relationship issues, music? It's more than just let's play music. No, it's we were friends, you know, mm -hmm. there were friends involved. And uh, and that means a lot to me, you know, so and, and the guys I have in my band now, they're my friends, you know, mm -hmm. we're, you know, there's always difficulties, family and drama. And there's always yeah. you know, difficulties, but friends more important actually more important than bands and anything else your friendships that you have mm. you know so whether um, i play music or not i appreciate my friends but so um before we go on a little bit deeper into this topic um i want to know um how it was for you i mean playing at static x i don't know how big static x were in the us during the time in 2005 but i mean i guess it was your let me say, first income of playing shows, doing record. And after this, I don't know how long um, you lived from your earnings, which you did in music, and then went, I guess, to a regular job, day job. Um, yeah, I don't know um, how it was back then. Like, okay, I was playing shows, playing around the world. This was my income, and now I have to do a regular job. How hard it was, or maybe normal. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was it, it was difficult. Yeah, because my money pretty much got you know spent on legal bills and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was it was a tough transition. But you know, my family supported me and everything else. So I I, I got definitely help from my family. So it was a transition. You know, finding other sources of income and stuff like that. But you know, I believed in myself that I had to play music. I didn't want to play in a cover band to make money or anything. So I found other sources of income. Um, you know, but I never gave up on the dream of playing music, no matter where I was. I was like, I got to play music, even if it's not successful, even if I don't get to that level again, I got to play for the sake of playing. And when you're doing it for the right reasons, not like desperate to get attention, people accuse me, mm -hmm. of, oh, tr desperate. He's just trying to attach himself to this or that. But people who know me know, like, I've been in about 16 bands in my career. Maybe my website will chronicle even my tiny little bands I was in. I won't even show pictures. Here's here's where I started my band in high school. Here's my band and and my my website will my my bio will talk about that. You'll see in my bio that'll be released next week. It'll talk about some of the little bands I was in. But I'll go into depth. Like I had fun playing little cover bands here. I was in an Ace Frehley tribute band. I was mm. in a Ramones Ramones tribute band, and I played bass. So I had fun no matter what we were doing. Playing in front of ten people in a club in New York or playing in front of 50,000 50, people in Germany or something, mm. you know, it's like, I have fun no matter what the crowd is because you're doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, that's, that's what it's about. You know, when we, when we did you ever see Static X play? Sure. Um, also with you on guitar in 2004 as support of Korn in Hamburg at the Stadtgarten and also did uh, somewhere on a hard disc. I got a picture. It's, very tiny because the resolution of my camera was uh, very very uh, very very low and i did what you mentioned earlier i was putting my camera between my legs go into a concert taking taking pictures and that was static x and corn and i remember that that my father he gave me the tickets for corn because uh corn is my favorite band um for christmas and then in june 20 no, 2004 i remember very well we drove from essen my hometown to hamburg four hours and then it was announced static x support band i was like wow how great is this because i was during that time also a big static x fan because of the song push it i was playing video games and push it was on a duke nukem soundtrack or video game or something like that and then uh, of course uh, in 2003 also Uh, a year before or six months before uh, Shadow, Shadow Zone was released and I got the newspaper, uh, Rock Art magazine, um, not newspaper, it's it's, it's uh, um, um, a scene magazine reading article about Shadow Zone was like, oh, cool, cool record. And then, yeah, was very uh, happy to see Static X during the time 2004 and 2009 also, but with a different lineup and uh, yeah, three years ago with a uh, Uh, with zero on uh, yeah on on vocals, so three times actually, one time with you yeah. What, the, when you saw us play, you said Hamburg. Hamburg, yeah. Was it was it the show where there was like 
grass on the sides. Yeah, was right. It, it was not not a build stage. How can I say? It was like a small hill, and there was, right. you were going down, and there was the crowd, and also like 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 a, how can I say that? It's a small open theater, like in the US. Yes. You have this. It's similar to that, but very small, like four thousand yeah. or five thousand. Yeah, but it was in Hamburg um, Stadtpark. It felt like a yeah, it felt like a park. Yeah, it was like yeah. a park, like a. But the, yeah. yeah, the stage. Yeah, it was a very unique show, and I, I remember that show. Yeah. And How many uh, people were there? four or five thousand actually. Yeah. I got somewhere in my basement also a small magazine who wrote an article about the show. I have, I have to look at that. But yeah, it was uh, June two thousand four. So a pretty yeah. long time. <laughs> 18, I, I, 18 years ago. I have, uh, I, 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 I've lost, I lost a lot of stuff in the transition of everything, but I think I have pictures of that day still. I'll dig them up if I'll send them to you. <laughs> I think I, I think I actually have some pictures of that that day yet. Maybe even, maybe even some video because we used to videotape a lot of the shows. I'm still going through the archives. Nice. But yeah, I remember that. That that was a great. I mean, torn with corn. It was amazing you know those guys are so cool and it was still the original drummer you know it was like definitely born still at that point you know it was amazing <laughs> especially for me as a fan it was yeah the, the first and only time i saw them with the original lineup so it was one of those concerts i was blown away and i remember my father he's he's not a he's not a metal guy and he was just a guy okay you want to a concert let's do that and in the early years it was not that often what I'm doing now and by myself alone because uh, I'm over 30. But right. back in the day, I remember when Static X came and I think one of the first song was Destroy All with, with the intro. Mm -hmm. I can, or was it Destroy All? I don't know which song it was, but um, it was an intro on that. It was on the Shadow Zone uh, record also. My father was just, oh no, what's happening now? And then you came, uh, Tony, uh, Nick, and uh, Wayne on stage. It was it was freaking out more or less because it was very hard, and the crowd they were also jumping and bouncing. And he was like, "Oh no, we have to go a couple steps back because of a little bit afraid." But um, yeah, it was uh, 18 years ago. It's a long, long time. But um, yeah, um, maybe we talk a little bit about that touring cycle about the Shadow Zone er era, not in uh, detail, because you mentioned it earlier, doing a podcast uh, show about that. You, you know something I, I remember from that tour, an uh, interesting, weird aspect of that tour. So we're touring with corn, obviously, so we're touring with corn. But throughout a uh, European tour, it's sprinkled with festivals. Yeah. You're doing festivals. And that tour was so amazing because there was a third aspect. So we're doing the corn tour. We're doing festivals, and every festival has corn on it, too. And then we're also doing a few club shows. Static X, we did a club yeah. show. We played in the Netherlands club show with a couple hundred people jammed in a club Static X show. And we played Scotland, and we played Spain. Yeah. Three club shows. Those three shows are some of the most memorable shows of that tour because we're headlining this little club, and they... The crowd's right in our face. No barricade. It was just like old school. Well, Scotland was actually a theater. So, but but yeah. So, so there's aspects. So we're going from playing clubs to Austria mm -hmm. festival. I can't remember the name of the festival. You ready for this? Metallica. Nova Rock, maybe. Maybe it was Metallica, Corn, Slipknot, Static X, Motorhead. Yeah. Um... Up all the yeah, um, I saw a couple weeks ago the whole touring cycle of Korn during that time. I also remember that they were support of Metallica. I don't know if Static X were also support, but I remember they played in Amsterdam at the at the soccer stadium. It was Metallica Korn. I don't know if also Static X at the big. No, we uh, only did one show with Metallica. That was on Austria. Seventy thousand people. It was yeah. insane. But here's what the story on that tour on the festivals remember i had to quit murder dolls right mm. i had to quit murder dolls ac slade replaced me so 
I felt bad because I, I helped build the band. I hated that I had to leave, but I had to record with Shadow Zone. I had to do the Shadow Zone album. I didn't want to miss out on songwriting. I mean, we love to perform, but songwriting, performing, they're two amazing pieces of, of the music business. So, but songwriting is more important than even performing. It's, it's the, the, the mother's milk of everything. So mm. out on that tour, we played with Slipknot. Slipknot was on some of these festivals. And I saw Joey, and Joey comes up. I can't remember the exact, but all of a sudden he comes, "Hey Trip, it's good to see." Because I thought he he was mad at me for yeah. having to quit, or he was upset that I had to quit. But he's like, "Oh, dude, it's go good to see you." And all of a sudden, we're buddies and we're hanging out, and it was great. And then he's like, "You, I want you and Wayne to walk, come out behind me." And he let me and Wayne sit behind him while he played in some German show, or no, it might have been the Austrian show. I can't remember. But I got pictures, which I'm going to release of me and Wayne sitting behind Joey Jordison watching yeah. him play, you know, his set. And it was like me and Wayne were there watching him. It was just cool. You Crazy. Know. So, yeah, so I reconciled with Joey on that mm. tour, right? reconnecting with Joey Jordison. And, and that was the last I, I seen him, you know. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, it was uh, interesting memories from, from these tours. But to me, it's like, that's why, like, friendship is more important. Like, reconnecting mm. with Joey. I'm sorry I couldn't play, but maybe someday I could have rejoined Murder Dolls or I could have done something because me and him, we had like, mm. we had a connection, you know, yeah. we had a con- it was a lot of, we, we connected on Slayer, Motley Crue, all these different type of bands that we were into and we wanted to do a similar vision. Murder Dolls was our vision together. We brought yeah. together. And uh, I want to ask um, about this whole touring cycle back in the day and also maybe from a business side, um, because to do an opening act for mm-hmm. Korn, I don't know if the guys asked you or they had the same management or was it like you had the same uh, booking agency or even was it like, hey, uh, we want to go with you on tour, but you have to pay I don't know, the tour bus oh, oh. was pay to pay, something like that. No, no. Uh, well, Jonathan Davis and Wayne were tight, you know, so. Okay. But the biggest management company in the world was the firm. The firm, yeah. It was the firm. So we had, if I can remember this, you had Rob Zombie, Corn, Lincoln Park, Stone Temple Pilots, Stained, Static X, and then a few other bands, okay. all in the same management. So why did we tour with Stained? They meant it. Why did we tour with Lincoln Park? All right. Why did we family Values. Why did we tour with Corn? Same management. Yeah. Okay. The only band we didn't tour with was Rob Zombie, <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, but, but all those bands we toured with Stone Temple Pilots, Lincoln Park on the Family Values tour. But we did a we did um, a couple shows with Corn and Lincoln Park down in Mexico, mm-hmm. big gigantic soccer stadium shows and. That was amazing. The guys in Lincoln Park were so cool. They, they, like, we saw one of their first shows when they first signed, and we did like some ski resort. We played like what was one of my first shows. I played in Static X. I joined Static X, and uh, our first show was in some um, casino in Nevada, not even Las Vegas, some casino in northern Nevada. We played this weird ballroom show. That was first show with Static X. Then we come down to LA and we play the Troubadour show, which is on, I think you can see it on YouTube, the, the, the second show I ever did. Then the third show is with Lincoln Park up in another ski resort outdoors with snow on the ground. We played an outdoor show with this new band. The management just signed Lincoln Park. And like, we didn't know who they were. Like, oh, they're going to be hot. And they're, they're bigging them up. And we met them and they were, I mean, every guy in Lincoln Park is so down to earth and so under like so cool and so like every time we'd seen them we'd run into them at the airport but mm. hey static x how you doing they're hugging us they're, they're just super cool dudes and then of course wayne did a um a little project with mike shinoda you know oh uh, yeah the extinctions or what it's called Ex- extinct uh, ex- oh, i can't remember the name of it something uh, like that ex- <laughs> well, executioners yeah executioners yeah so yeah so like there's all these little connections you know because of the firm because of the big management coming along we got all these different you know interesting tours and all the little perks and everything you know <laughs> nice a lot of fun but yeah 
So yeah, um, you mentioned also a little bit earlier that you were reconnecting with people from your former bands, for instance, and uh, I don't want to go into detail about that because a lot of things are online and out there, but I maybe you give us an insight what from your point happened in April 29, because um, to summarize it, you were part of, let me say, rebooting static x and you uh, pitched also some ideas to rebuild or reboot the whole uh, brand and uh, yes unfortunately something happened in 2019 and um, then there are now two sides you and the current static x lineup and, uh, and i want to know was there a specific point where everything was blowing up or was it more like a process okay something is going on because for the people who don't know more or less it's going about songs from the past which you wrote with wayne and you weren't that happy the progress or which uh, the progress and vision which um, bad members want to take and then something i don't know happened and it is what it is now hope i say it so you, I hope I summarized it correct. Uh, well, no, you said April 2000. What did you say? April, April 2019. Oh, 19. Right, yeah. April 2019. Yeah, well, 2016 is when I went to Tony. And um, and then the, those years, 2016, 2017, we're working on the music and working on, um, you know, the, the songs that would develop into Project Regeneration. So... What happened? You know, that's the, the question. Well, what the hell happened? What happened here? You know, and it's like, that's the question that they don't want answered. They do not want to answer what happened. They're just, go away, go away, go away. Shoo, shoo, shoo. That's what they want. They want me to shoo away. Well, I'm a human being here. I'm mm -hmm. your former friend. I like to think we could still be friends with, because like we we have this history. Mm -hmm. So it's all about money and fame. And you want to just step on me, you know, put the boot on my neck. Or do you want to say, Trip was a good person. He actually helped us with a lot of things. My songs got them charted. The songs I wrote with Wayne, the three songs on that album, Something of My Own, Bring You Down, yeah. and Hollow. Those songs helped them chart on iTunes and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, and I didn't like what they did with those songs. you know. And Tony, he's not going to like me saying this, but Tony said to me, he didn't apologize per se, but he said, yeah, we should have included you when we started to change these songs they didn't tell me what they were doing because we should have included you in the process they were your songs they were me and wayne's songs mm -hmm. they weren't Tony didn't write them koichi didn't write them nobody these are three songs that me and wayne wrote collaborated on each one has a different interesting history and i can go into detail in my podcast but each of those songs is like they're like my kids they, they mean something to me so you got someone coming in there the producer and so though changing things and not say hey dude this is what we're doing it's just common cur it's courtesy you know but then it's almost like they were like sorry we can do it without your consent so go away and like it just but then later when, when i had a good talk with tony he's like listen we should have included you when we were working on those songs but at some point he's like but too bad now you know it's just like it was hurtful you know it was hurtful and it was unnecessary you know mm -hmm. at some point the scoop is this, which I'll give you a scoop on this. The uh, the understanding was I was involved in this reunion. And then they said to me, let's do the Wisconsin death trip anniversary. Let's bring Koichi back in and do this anniversary. And then you come back in for the machine anniversary. You you just work behind the scenes. And then for the machine anniversary, we'll bring you back in because you were part of machine. It was a handshake. It wasn't in writing, but it was a, a promise they mm. made. To me. And then they just got ahead of them. They were like, oh, and they, I, I don't want to like get into too much um, like accusations, but they just were like, well, the less we have to split with Trip, the more money, maybe it's a money thing. I, I don't know. You know, they, they, they were trying to say, oh, it's because of his background. Well, you didn't care about that. Mm. You were working on things. You were using my songs. We were collaborating. I was collaborating with Edsel. On songs, I was collaborating with Tony on songs. I got the songs I wrote with Wayne, but there's a theme to all the stuff we were doing. Trip 
trip with Edsel, trip with Tony, mm. trip with Wayne. It was like I was involved in everything, but they had to systematically pull things out, and mm. they couldn't pull everything out. But there, but there's songs on this album that had something to do with that I didn't get my name on, and that's really hurtful and it's illegal. And but I'm not gonna, you know. There's so much you can do legally. There's only so much you can do. I hired a, an attorney, mm. and you got to decide to roll the dice and spend money. I decided to let it go for now, you know, mm. but I feel like I'm going to straighten things out through my podcast, through doing interviews like yours, mm. doing interviews and talking about things and saying, dude, we were friends. Just stop all this play acting. We're friends, you know, and uh, yeah. it doesn't have to end this way. We, we reconcile through the years. I mean, I've had such a history with Edsel Dope. Yeah. Dimebag Daryl's funeral, Dimebag Daryl's viewing, you know what a wake of viewing is, right? Yeah, sure. Pretty pretty emotional event. Dimebag Daryl's funeral. Uh, wake. Be, the day before the funeral. Edsel is there. With dope. Static X is there. We were like enemies at that point. 2004. Edsel sees me. comes up. He hugs me. He goes, listen, life is too short. Look at what happened to Dimebag. We can't. We got to bury the hatchet. Let's just. And he was hugging me. And like, oh, we took pictures. And we. We reconciled there after all our bad blood. So that's 2004. Then all of a sudden things get weird again. Then in 2008, he invites me on the bus. So it's like there's this been this weird, call it bipolar thing. Like I'm pretty steady, you know. Like friend is a friend, mm. but uh, but I understand, you know, things people have their own things going on in their life. But but I I feel getting back to my point is friendship is the most important thing. These guys shared a lot with me, and it takes a little bit of courage to say Trip is my, our friend, and they're afraid. There's a lot of trolls. Oh, you're you're friends with Trip. Screw him. We're friends. You got to just say what's right. And they they had my back. If they're inviting me back for the machine reunion uh, anniversary, at that point they were inviting me back. They weren't like, oh, we changed our mind. They just started changing the songs. I started protesting. And they were like, they didn't like that I. God had to get a lawyer. They could have said, listen, get rid of your lawyer. Never mind the lawyers. Let's just talk this out. But they just bashed it. They got their lawyer, Ozzy Osbourne's lawyer. Now they got Donald Trump's lawyer. <laughs> they they yeah. hired an a, a, a attorney that represented Donald Trump, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hulk Hogan. Like, why do you need a lawyer that big? Mm. Maybe the same reason OJ needed some big lawyers, because when you're guilty, you got to. When you're not doing the right thing, you need a pretty powerful lawyer to battle things. So. Um, <laughs> from an outstanding, um, let me say, fan perspective, however you want to call it, I mean, there are some, um, not hints, but um, there are, so, for instance, pictures of you eating with Edsel and Tony in a restaurant and also uh, talking about this whole project static x to reboot it i mean there are a lot of hints and you have a lot of demo uh, d demos recorded during um, the years because why i'm talking about this i saw yesterday my own video which i did about i don't know two three years ago when edsel was calling you out and said things like you've never been a part of this and uh, something ugly uh, things where i think hey i mean you reconnected with him um, you maybe forgave him, you had talks about that, and how ugly can a person get, or maybe what happened actually that he got so salty and talking all about this and denying that you were part. Even uh, I, I have a record from uh, the machine, a vinyl record, it came out two years ago, you were on the back. The new version which they released, there's Koishi on the back, so they cancelled everything. Um, Yeah, about your history, about the Static X history. And if I could, uh, maybe I got the possibility, I would ask Edsel, hey, why are you doing this more or less denying or rewriting the history, the past or something? Because it's, I don't know, it's not fair. You can. Right, it's not, well, and, and what I got on my side is the truth. There's a truth. Like you, you mentioned a picture of me eating. Did you see the picture of me in my jammies at his house? Like, I'm in my pajamas at his house in his studio. He's recording, and I'm there in my jammies. I got video of me recording, like, working on stuff. And, and like, and then I, I, I got proof 
in writing the offer for me to join dope that was in black and white writing i can release all these things their lawyer was like you better not release anything well it's a free country you know but to, to your point like from your perspective you're german you're european yeah. europeans uh, like get it a little bit more than Amer americans are more fickle i don't want to put down americans but but Ger like like i was playing one of my drummers in face of that fear was from russia i was playing with this russian drummer he's awesome but he moved to america he's living in america and um he said trip you know we got to go to europe and tour because in europe they don't care about all this stuff about your past it's like you know it's like you know it's like you know what's the big deal about um that americans make about a lot of things not that it's not a, a like I'm not dismissing anything. It's, it's I take everything seriously, but mm. Europeans are a little bit more understanding about things. Um, and I think that's all I was looking for. And I got that understanding from Tony, from Edsel, from uh, Ken J, from other people I play with, all the guys in Rough House. They showed me that understanding. And not, not to say there's not people in America that don't. I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of people have supported me and wanted to know how I was doing through the years and and um but there's a there's a certain vibe I think um that I I just I get Europeans mm. maybe uh, uh, are a little bit more forgiving or understanding about certain things and Edsel Dope these are his words he said to me like everybody deserves a second chance you know this is America we're in we're in America it's a land of second chances and you know you deserve a second chance you're rebuilding your life and this was edsel's opinion he said what we'll say to the press is this and he said we'll say trip deserves a second chance and he rebuilt his life he paid his dues and um you know we think he's a good person and that that was that was their perspective that was what they were going to say in the press and they said if you say such such we got your back you know just you know go to the press and do interviews and they were you know talking about how they were going to address it but but me coming back into the band was going to be i was excited about it i was like so happy i was working with edsel and tony i was working with my guys in rough house which i still am i was working with you know the people that i you know worked with before and that's it meant a lot to me so like friendship and everything else is is important and i think that's that's what's going to win out like why are they doing this how can they maintain the lie over how can they maintain it they can't they're not going to maintain it they're going to have to that's why tony god bless, i love tony tony's a good person i've been to his house you know shared there's about nothing i can say well we weren't close because we, we shared everything i mean i shared everything the last couple of years and even when we were on tour years ago mm -hmm. so tony in some interviews he's like oh um about trip oh, oh. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not going to give that guy any time. Why does he stop the interview? Because he doesn't want to lie. Because he knows lying is wrong. And he doesn't want, he'd rather just shut it down. He doesn't want to lie. Edsel is a little easier lying. It's a character issue. If you're cool with lying, you can just lie. You lie. But Tony doesn't want to. Same with AC Slate. AC Slate does say, oh, oh, oh. That's the guy. We're not talking about that guy. We're not talking about that guy. That guy that helps you get into the business. You know what? I mean, it's hurtful, you know? So Tony is, is my friend. I know he's my friend. Like he's going through all this and there's different reasons, but I feel like he's going to regret what he did here, the decisions he made. Tony owned Static X. I don't know if you, people know this. Yeah, Tony, yeah. sole owner of the name Static X, he calls the shots. So it doesn't happen unless he does. And, and I know like he's going to regret this because like I'm his friend, you know, it's like, dude, we're, we're friends like, bro, come on, you know, stop all this nonsense. We're all getting older and too old for all this stuff. You know, just stop the lies. Stop it. You know, it mm. doesn't it, it doesn't sit well. It, that's not a good look. Just, you mm. know, be cool about it. You know, I was involved with these things. I know it's inconvenient that I wrote like for Edsel. It's very inconvenient that I wrote his biggest hit song. Die, mother, F or die. Mm -hmm. It's a trip song that he put lyrics to. It wasn't just I helped him finish the song. That's an inconvenient thing. It's inconvenient that I wrote one of Static X's biggest songs, The Only, and that I had something to do with all these other songs that they need to harvest now. They're harvesting for Project Regeneration Volume 2. There's going to be more songs on there with Wayne's vocal. Uh, at least three of them are trip mm -hmm. collaborations. So how are they going to get around that? They're going to have to, once again, 
try to take my name off something that I wrote and then I got to, you know, lawyer up again and do do all this. It's just like they should just call me up and just discuss things and just work. I'm open to work things out with them. So it's just so it's, it's uncomfortable and unfortunate because I'd rather be talking about, you know, how I love these guys and I wish them well. But yeah. It's just, but but I'm excited because the songs they're going to have on the next album are going to be my collaborations. It'll be, see yeah. if they're going to do the right thing and put my name on it. Yeah. But you know about Project X? You know about the other project I got? Yeah, we will talk about this um, um, in a couple of minutes. And I got two more questions about, let me say, the Static X chapter. And uh, um, the second last question is uh, when it comes to zero the front man because um, it is not official announced yet who the singer is and in one of your press releases you stated more or less that uh, yet you pitched the idea of etzel doll becoming the singer and also with the mask because x-man and this x type thing and after let me say this pr article do you regret more or less to leak um yeah the static x singer which is official not uh yeah announced yet who that is was it something like during that point was what was going on between you and Edsel that was something you have to clarify about the let me say your contribution in the static x reboot frame right it's 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 kind of goofy isn't it it's kind of silly it's kind of it's kind of goofy right it's like on the you look on the back of the static x it says produced by zero executive producer Edsel dope you want to say Edsel What was it like working with Zero in the studio? Was it cool? How did he take long to do his vocal takes? Like, oh yeah. Uh, well, it's like it's just a bunch of it's weird. It was a bad. I think it was a bad decision to sit there and like he had to get Edsel Dope's name on the album. It couldn't just be. I'm I'm an alternate person. Zero. There had to be the Edsel brand on there too. Yeah, we know what's going on. So like, but but yeah, I did put in a press release, so it's official. He's zero. So like, what, what else, you know, you know, it's like, 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 you want to pretend it's not, oh, no, he's still denying this. And everybody knows, no, people don't know. I understand what he's doing because, you know, it's, it's a weird thing, but mm. I, I know his personality. I know what, what he's, he's trying to do. And it's like, I think it's just like, it's just weird, weird thing mm. right now. You know, it's like, unfortunate. The, the original idea um, was not, put your hair up and put a mask on and do a Wayne cosplay type of thing. The original idea was the static X man, a mask mm. with the mouse cut out and the X like the X man from the comic book. It was supposed to be maybe a futuristic type of thing. Not like this zombie mask. Uh, Wayne came back from the dead. It's mm. everybody knows it's weird. You know, mm. everybody knows it's, it's, Hey, it's metal. Yeah. No. No, if someone else did it, they're not doing that in the Pantera tour, are they? You know, <laughs> like there's not any Dimebag or Vinnie masks going mm. on. It's like it's you know, it ain't, it ain't cool. But but yeah, it's like at, at this point, like dude, I brought him to the table. Mm. You know, I, did, I brought him to the table. He knows that, but he's he'll never admit it. So it's like, is Tony going to admit it? Of course not. But Tony knows what happened. He knows mm. he knows the the pro the progress the process. Mm what happened and do i regret it i don't uh, but i, I had the vi vision of like we were going to audition singers you know mm. but as like dude let me help produce you dude let me help so it's like you know we gave it a, we gave it a go you know we gave it a go and um it is what it is now you know mm. but these these guys were my friends i trusted them yep. and I, you know it's like I, i put my all into things so yep. the creativity you know mm. goes so far I don't know if you can, let me say, divide um, Static X, what they're doing now, and your problems and or dispute is, I guess, the right word. Uh, from a fan perspective, I saw them three years ago. I was like, it's a cool concept that you have a singer that that uh, that is uh, who is masked because nobody is uh, saying, oh, it's a singer of that band and I don't like that music because with this mask, we have some kind, some kind of misery and it's all about the music, the focus is my, just my opinion, the focus is more um, on the music and also that they are still like, hey, we don't confirm officially um, that who the singer is from the Static X side and because it gives them, 
some kind of slipknot back in the days feeling like who, who's that guy and all the news uh, magazines also um yeah writing about it let me say this way um as a magazine and as a fan there are some hints who the singer is but i would never step up and say hey <laughs> you are the singer great job i know it's a little bit ridiculous but from a fan perspective i also want to yeah have to this this kind of misery you know what i mean and um right. yeah, yeah. I, I compare it to kiss mm -hmm. kiss has these two guys wearing makeup that belong to somebody else you know so you got zero wearing a persona that belongs to somebody else so fans tolerate it yeah the, 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 i think some fans don't care the, the, i think fans are just split there's a, like a lot of things that fans are just like whatever like i i won't go see kiss like I, if i got free tickets i would go see kiss but i'm not i'm a kiss fanatic i don't want to go, go see kiss you know without you know the real four original members you know yeah but like, so it's kind of like static x is is doing this thing and it's just i was friends with wing it hurts my feelings to see i don't care if it was ed solar i don't care if it was the guy from this band or that band or an unknown guy it hurts my feelings to see what they're doing as a friend of wayne mm. and uh, obviously i know a lot of people that don't that are tight with that loved wayne and are a little bit disturbed and hurt by it too you know so yeah it's it's what what did you call it misery yeah i i mean yeah misery who the man behind the mask is and like i said before there are some clear hints who the person is but from a fan perspective it's like i respect that that they are doing this you know besides the hints let me say but um yeah i would never step up and say to the person behind the mask hey you are the singer of like i said before it's more or less clear but right uh, i don't discuss this on my magazine let me say it this way because this is some kind of gossip who the singer is and blowing all headlines over the internet it's, it's, it's it, like i said before i'm also a fan and i want to respect that and uh, that what they are doing i know um, that there's some drama behind which i also see and have in my mind and uh, yeah well yeah and it's and, and i'm just an inconvenient uh it's an inconvenient part of their history but it's like Dope murdered all Static X. Yeah, so, oh yeah, Trip's just a little asterisk. You know, uh, he's a little part of this band's history. No, actually, if you look at YouTube, the number one videos of each of those bands I'm in. Mm. Number one Dope video, everything sucks. Number one Static X video, the only. Number one murdered mm. all's video, Dead in Hollywood. It's like I'm not just some like character that was there for a tiny. Oh, it's just there for a tiny bit. Well, the tiny bit I was in those bands was their heyday and their biggest part of their career, unfortunately for them. Mm. So like it's 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 an inconvenient thing. That's why like I feel like somebody should say to them, like, just call trip up and get this over with and just like let's work something out here. Because it's like it's it's painful. Mm. Obviously it's painful for me because I, I like to know my friends, but I, I mean I, I I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I love playing music, face without mm. fear. Love the music, the mm. other stuff we're doing, which we'll get into. But, but it's like it's yes, yeah, the word misery that you use is good. It's just like it's 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 unfortunate. But the truth will win out. You know, the truth mm. will win. You can't keep up. It's hard to keep up a lie. Eventually, you break down, like, and you confess, like, oh, this was stupid. You know. Mm. And uh, yeah, my last question to the Static X chapter is because um, Tara, the wife of Wayne, there was some kind of live streaming event with a lot of bands were playing at the Whiskey Agogo. I, I, I don't know. It is somewhere on YouTube, but I got it on my hard drive. And Tara said with with she had some kind of I don't know the, the English word, but there was Wayne and it. it was some kind of um, cup. I don't know. The coffin is. Um, similar to a coffin but smaller an urn yeah urn. and she was like um that wayne wrote nine new songs before he died and i asked uh steady x three years ago they never heard of that um, that there were actually nine new recorded songs somewhere out there do you have any idea about that or what she could um yeah mean during uh yeah that ceremony that she said hey 
Wayne recorded nine brand new songs and she wanted actually to release that. She announced that. I don't know if you have any idea about that. I asked that. I, like, got, got, I have a, I got, I got an answer for you. Yes, but I can't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have an idea about what you're talking about. I have an idea and because of people that I've reconnected with mm. that knew Wayne very well, I have an idea better than the guys in Static X do about a lot of behind the scenes stuff with Wayne and, and stuff like that. But, but there's like some conflicting things going on that, that All right. unfortunate things, but yeah, there could very well be some, you know, material. So what, whether it ever gets released or it's buried forever, mm. you know, I, I'm not sure, but it, it very okay. well could be, but sh she didn't know, um, I'm saying not. I'm, I'm sure she is, she's his wife, so she knew a lot about. But how unfinished were they? I'm not uh, positive, but they could obviously. If we got them, we could finish them. But but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but I have an idea that that, that that's true. Yeah. So, okay. but yeah, but back to that that show, that show at the Whiskey a Go Go. There was no Static X members. <laughs> you know, it was unfortunate. Like, yeah. and I I talked to. Uh, um, somebody was in Wayne's band and they said, Oh no, uh, we invited everybody. I'm like, I don't remember getting an invite, <laughs> but, but I would, I, I would have loved to go, you know, and be part of that, you know, cause I, I never got to meet Tara Ray, but when Wayne passed away, I know their manager uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that worked with Wayne. And I get, told him, send Tara Ray a message that I offer my condolences. I'd love to talk to her, you know, just because, you know, it's, she's Wayne's widow and, you know, it would have been nice to talk to her. And unfortunately she's gone now. And that's sad. You know, it's very sad. Cause I don't know, I don't know if she'd be too happy with what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. Sure. And uh, yeah, that was my last question about the static X chapter. And um, you lead me to um, let me say the project X um, mm -hmm. band chapter because for the people who um, don't know or did not see the podcast which you did a couple of weeks ago but i saw it and you mentioned um that you are putting up a band which is covering re-recording or releasing um your own vision of static x right maybe you can give us a little more info about that yeah it's something i've been working on for over over a year now but i'm just letting it take its course like it's, it's interesting stuff so i got all these songs that i co-wrote songs that didn't end up on project regeneration because they were trying to purge the trip stuff that they were doing but there's a song on project regeneration called my destruction my destruction and anybody who's paying attention will know that was called road to hell and that was an yeah. original teaser yeah like that's a song and then there's a whole bunch of other songs so this project x which is yet to be named project x is actually what i called i used to put when i was working with tony on a lot of stuff i would just label it project x you know about static x mm. project x i would just put that on the cds or i titled the you know things the songs were project x project x um Quick, quick question how it is is it when it comes to the uh, copyright of the name because i know there's a hardcore band from the 80s who called project x is it allowed to use the name no, no, but for i'm not going to use project x as the name it's just that's just what i'm calling it ah okay that's a x working just, title just a, like a working title yeah project because there is yeah I, I yeah there's a lot of uh, project x's so but i was using the name project x on correspondence and different things with static x when we were doing the reunion 2016 to 2019 so it's just kind of funny like all oh, my thing project x project x and the album just comes out project regeneration you know it's just kind of like there's this vibe going on like like the album start a war i was wearing the shirt war is the answer yeah. and then the next static x i'm gonna start a war kind of like kind of ideas kind of coalesce and they kind of like evolve you know and you can't copyright trademark ideas or a word or anything but you know there's certain a vibe so like my mark you know was left on some things but but project my project x my this separate band that i have a separate singer separate drummer separate bass player um 
it's going to be a like it's going to be sort of what Static X is doing now. It's going to be like I'm going to be doing some classic Static X songs, maybe mm. re-recording them and having my new singer sing them. I'm going to be doing unreleased songs that nobody's ever heard, songs that were from back in the day that I co-wrote. Then there's some songs I worked with Tony on from 2016, some excellent songs that me and him worked on that were songs that I wrote in my quiet years. Um, and then me and Tony collaborated on. So there's got Trip Tony songs and some Trip Edsel songs that are unreleased that didn't make it on Project Regeneration and some, so you could say Trip Zero songs. We'll call them Trip Zero songs. Mm. Then we got some Trip Ken J songs I have yep. in the art. So I got me writing with Ken J, Tony, Wayne, Zero. It's a lot of collaboration with Static X dudes is going to be in this project. So to me, it's exciting. Mm. And, um, and I'm going to do the three songs that they put on this album, the three old songs, something of my own, Bring You Down, mm -hmm. Hollow. I might do the original versions of those songs before they tampered with them. Mm -hmm. I'll do the original versions because those songs were finished. That's mm -hmm. why, like, the lie doesn't work. They said those were unfinished demos. No, they were finished, mixed, and mastered and had the Warner Brothers logo on the CD. I could, maybe I'll show it on my website, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the working title was Pieces. Start a War was called Pieces. You know the yeah. song Pieces? Pieces. That was going to be the title track of the Pieces album, but it ended up being the Start a War album. Mm. So I got a version of Pieces, the album Pieces, early version with the Warner Brothers logo, mixed and mastered. Something of my own, hollow, bring you down, mixed and mastered. So they were saying, oh, they're unfinished demos. Propaganda, you know, it's that's not the truth. So I might just straight up do the original versions of those songs. So I got a lot of different like little groups of songs, like some songs we might do Road to Hell, which is my destruction, the original mm -hmm. version that I wrote with, with Zero. Zero Dope or whatever his name is. <laughs> so, so like I'm going to put these, these songs mm -hmm. out and it's going to make them uncomfortable. They're going to have to like, Whoa. but it's the, these are songs you guys worked on. I'm not going to take your guy's name off it. I'm going to keep your guy's name on and you're going to make whatever little money I make you're going to get a piece of it because your mm. name's going to be on there, Tony and Edsel and Ken yeah. Jay and Wayne, that's Stat that's Wayne Static's estate will make money on whatever. Yeah. That's interesting that's because that was one of the questions which uh, comes up in my mind, like in case, would you give them credits for the songs? Um, yeah, but you answer those well, questions. You I will give them credits. Right. And Obviously, I don't want to take their names off of it because mm. it would be wrong, but it's also good marketing too. It's like, these are songs I wrote with Ken Jay mm. and and Tony and Wayne, I got some, I got some little tiny song, like rough, 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 rough demos that I wrote mm -hmm. with Wayne that he sent me some stuff and I worked on it and we're going to like pull that stuff out. And the singer I'm working on who sounds freaking awesome. And I can't wait till people can hear it. Cause it's mm -hmm. really it's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. So some of these songs, it's just like, I mean, it's going to bother these guys. That's why it's like, well, let's call me up and let's work something out because I don't want to, you know, it's like, I don't, this ongoing conflict does it work to my favor oh he's riding the coattails dude you're riding my coattails you're using my songs you know are you mm -hmm. riding my coattails am i riding what could what could be more coattails than putting a mask on putting your hair up and having a i mean riding coattails like you know <laughs> but tommy thayer doesn't claim to be you know he's just like respectfully doing an ace freely imitation everybody knows it and Tom, that's why i don't want to Say anything bad about Tommy Thayer, Eric Singer, because they're amazing. Eric Singer on the Revenge album, Kiss, Tommy Thayer in his own right. He, he's a, he's an amazing artist in his own right. He's doing the best Ace Frehley. Mm. You know, like it's bringing that to people who want to see it. So, like, while I don't want to go see the new Kiss, it, it's doing something that people want to see. And and Gene, I can't blame Gene and Paul. They're 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 giving fans what they want for now until they retire. You know, so like. But you got to do it with the right sentiment in your heart. And uh, and I think, so pro getting back to Project X, Project X, I'm excited about it. And and the guys that I'm working with, they're like, come on, we got to get this going, Trip. You know, they're they're excited to get it out, but I, you can only do so much. I'm, mm. you know, I'm playing with three bands right now. <laughs> three bands, actually? Yeah. Uh, um, Face Without Rough. Fear, Project X, and? Rough House. Oh, Rough House, of course. Yeah, I yeah. forgot about that. We'll do some shows. It's yeah. not... It's not high intensity, but we actually got offered a record deal. We might be putting, like, nice. re-releasing the old records, the one I wasn't on, the one I was on. Mm. And there's a record company that wants to put out even maybe new stuff, re-records, yeah. demo, a DVD, 
Rough House might have all this material coming out. So, yeah. but, uh, but that's, that kind of runs itself. Like trying to just like, I'm just a member. Tell me when to show up type of thing. But, but Face Without Fear, we got, I mean, we've been, it's been taking forever, but we have an album in the works and an EP. We're mm. doing excellent cover songs. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a teaser. We're going to, we got this song, a version of the only. Yeah. Back ballad version of the only and it's just amazing you know we're gonna that's gonna be a face without fear thing it's like that we just we were working and we got to put it out mm. yeah, we just got to put it out it's awesome so we got a lot of exciting nice. things. um i want to stick a little bit up uh, to um, project x do you have anything um you can say about release or also a website which is coming up or also current status of this project band however you want to call it yeah it's Basically, we want to get a song out as soon as possible. We're working on a group of songs right now. So whatever song um, comes up uh, the best sounding, we're going to try to release it as soon as possible. So it may just come out of nowhere. Um, maybe have a YouTube channel dedicated to Project X. Because I'm got i going to have a, a YouTube channel for my podcast. So I got to like you know i don't have too many youtube channels but but it's going to be like yeah basically um a song I want to do a video and just do it right we might do a teaser kind of like what static x did we put out a trailer and kind of introduce the band to here's trips you know version of you know here's my static x songs because like you know I, i've been and and to be honest like I, why is trip doing this and and my friends know the people i i my team who, who works with me on different things i got to I got a lot of like, guys that work on pro video production and stuff that I'm work working with. I'm not really a do-it-yourself guy. I'm like, I can't go edit stuff. Like, I'm not really good at all that stuff, mm -hmm. so I have to hire people to do it. But um, what I want to do is uh, basically get it out there and let people see it. But but they ask, like, why are you doing this? And people who know me just know, and you're going to have to take my word for it, that it doesn't matter – what Static X is doing, mm. you're gonna, yeah, right. I'd be doing this anyway. I'd be putting out my stuff. Tony said to me, I don't want to reunite Static X. And I, I'd be doing Project X anyway because the world needs to hear this material. Now the world might need to hear it more because of this, you know, different version of Static X that I don't necessarily agree with. I think give people something that they can listen to and they can judge for themselves. Is this more like, the vibe of static X or, you know, or whatever mm. they can check it out. So it's, I'm mm. excited about it. If it, if it is successful or not successful, it doesn't matter. I got to do it. Just like mm. Tara Ray was going to put out Wayne's material. She was talking about, I yeah. was going to put out Wayne's material. All right. I got my own archives of stuff. You know, some of it is similar. I mean, dude, I, I turned over some songs to Tony. You know, I, I maybe I regret doing that because they they, you know, betrayed me a little bit. But I, I opened like, here's what I got here. Do you remember this song? Do you remember that song? And like they may not have even discovered these songs. So the fact that they're trying to erase me or cancel me is hurtful because I, I handed these things over. You know, I, I'm very methodical and meticulous in keeping records of stuff, you know. Mm. So it's like I kept these things. Tony's like, oh, you got this. You got that. I forgot about this. I didn't know about this. You know, like, yeah, mm. dude. Even, dude, even Edsel came to me when he was putting out. Do you remember the dope early years release they just put out? Uh, yeah, it was announcing that in, in a video with the Life Rarities records, I guess. Some, something it, like that. He was something. It, it's dope the early years. It was an audio release. It wasn't yeah. an audio release about the old demos and, and pictures. And um, you know, he shows me in it. And there's a little write-up of Trip. Mm. I helped him put that together. You know, he's like, dude, I got to put together. Do you have anything in your archives? Because he knows I'm meticulous. Edsel knew yeah. I kept records and I had like better version of demos and higher, better sounding versions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you send that all to me? And I sent him pictures. I didn't ask for any money. It's like, go oh, use it, you know, you know, make, make some money on it, dude. So like, I want to do it for the right reason. I'm excited to work on stuff. So maybe I didn't, you know, get all the legal things in order to make sure I make money on things, but I said to Tony, go, I got integrity, dude. I'm not out for the money. Yeah, yeah. it's nice to be famous and, and make money on things, but you got to do it for the right reasons from square one. Mm. And people can judge for themselves. The, the, the years are going to go on. The story is not over. It's still 
unwrittenness. The future is unwritten. Anything mm -hmm. could happen in the future. People who thought would never go back, back together got back together. Mm -hmm. As long as we're alive and we're breathing, mm -hmm. we can create and we can people can reconcile. You know, so it will be very interesting because what I ask myself, you know, we have uh, project regeneration, we have project X, and I don't know, maybe in the future we have the, let me say, Terra Ray archive music of Wayne's new nine songs thing, which may come up. And uh, yeah, let's uh, see what the future will bring us to the table. And um, also with your um, current band, Face Without Fear, you mentioned a little bit earlier, I guess you said you recorded an EP, four songs, or what, what was it? The EP is, yeah. uh, remember Marilyn Manson's second album? Yeah, um, it's the green one, the, the yeah. um, yeah, yeah. That smells like children, it had, uh, it had, uh, yep, there you go, yeah. Sweet Dreams on it. So it was like a collection, but it's like, yeah, an yeah. EP, but it's like almost a full album. And our little, what we were planning to do as an EP is starting to expand, like it might be like a full album EP of mm. cover songs, remix, I mean, it's hard to have a remix, but we were doing some remixes and some some neat little things like Ramones, Misfits, Beatles. We have a couple other things we're going to throw on there, like, you know, taking a, like a power metal industrial type of versions of these songs. And, and, and then we got the ballad version of the only, and we got, you know, some remixes of, of the, my bass player is going to do of some of the other face of that fear releases like deliverance and my parasite. So we, we want to put out the EP just to test the waters and, you know, because we're on a tight budget, unless we get a, a record deal offered to, to put it out on a label, mm -hmm. but we might put it out ourselves. And then we have the full album, Face Without Fear, which is, you know, pretty much almost done. But we just we're working in a new drummer right now. So, mm -hmm. so but that's I mean, that music is exciting. It's got a message. It's got cool lyrics. And uh, I love working with the guys. They're just, you know, like I said, it's it's about, you know, it's about the it sounds like a cliche, but mm -hmm. it's about the music and you have to have fun doing it. You know. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, if I get it right, um, new music is already more or less done. You're looking for a drummer and also for a record label to release it. So this also means to release it on your own on a digital platform like uh, uh, Spotify is until now not an option. Yeah, yeah. We Well, we release things. Uh, we've released three songs so yeah. far. So we can keep releasing stuff on our own. I'd like to get a, a, a if a record company wants is into Put, putting it out we're gonna shop we haven't even started shopping it yet we i'm like behind the eight ball <laughs> like um i'm slow at stuff so like I, i'm hoping to you know shop it around like i got somebody that, that might be shopping it around for, for us like maybe project x and face that fear together separate whatever because they're two separate bands and i've been doing static x stuff with face without fear we've been live shows we cover a couple static x songs a dope song a murder all song so the Static X stuff, I'm going to kind of migrate to Project X. So we mm. might still do a dope song like Debonair. Or, oh, I like to do um, Love at First Fright by Murder Dolls. We were doing that song. You know, give fans a little bit of, you know, taste of some of the other bands I played in. But, but yeah, the, 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 the Static X stuff is near and dear to my heart. Even songs I didn't play on, like songs that, I mean, I didn't play on the Machine album, but those songs are like, I feel like I, I was such a part of that. It's part of my you know, just part of who I am. It's just like the guys in Twisted Sister, right? Mm. You know, the sister. Yeah, sure. D. Snyder pretty much D. Wrote, Snyder, all, yeah. wrote all the material pretty much. He came in, he, but those guys, it's, it's their band. It's like, we're not going to take it. It's all their songs, even though D wrote it. It's like, so Machine is like, it's like you know, Wayne always talking. I mean, you can see I got the, the album plaque for Machine right here. It's like Wayne gave me an album. He gave me an album plaque for Wisconsin Death Trip, which... He goes, you're in the band, you deserve this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, he, he believed in me and Wayne believed in me, Joey Jordison believed in me. These, these are like important things in my history. And I, and I, I can't, yeah. like, I can't, um, I can't forget that because that's kind of inspired me. You know, the fact that I, you know, work with these people that were, were gone now and it's like, they, they mean a lot to me and their memory is like, it's, mm -hmm. it gets painful. If I think about it, you know, it's painful. We lost Joey just last year. Yeah. But, but yeah, but I'm excited about the uh, the new music. I'm excited. It's like it's almost like too mm -hmm. much on my plate, you know. It's like my uh, someone close to me is like, you know, you should just like 
just do two bands. Why are you doing three? Well, Roth House is that's easy, but the other two, they're they're both necessity. Yep. You've got to do both of them. They're both very important. So I'm excited to get it out there. So I see we are talking for over one and a half hours or more or less one and a half hours. I don't know if you open up to the yeah last chapter about the murder draws because it's also very deep and I see also some similarities to the Static X topic. Um, if not, we can also um, yeah do a cut more or less and coming to an end. I don't know if you are open up to talk about that because I guess it's yeah. also... Well, the, yeah, the murder dolls... Um... Yeah, it's like I, I was, it's the 20th anniversary, right? It's mm. the 20th anniversary of the Murder Dolls. So Murder Dolls is something like is near and dear to me too because I didn't, while I didn't write any songs in the band, I played all the, pretty much all the leads on the first album. Mm. And Joey was like, you know, we got to, I don't know if you ever looked at the credits of the album. We wanted to make the credits like Judas Priest or Slayer where you're mm. reading the lyrics, lead, Hanneman, lead King, lead Downing, lead Tipton. Like while you're looking at the lyrics, then you hear a lead come on and you, it tells you who's playing the lead for Judas Priest or yeah. Slayer. So we did that. So you're reading lead Jordison, lead Eisen, or lead Trip, lead Joey or whatever. Yeah. So you read the lyrics and you know who's playing each lead. And you're like, Joey wanted to, like, we got to let people know who's playing each lead, you know? So it's like, I, I appreciated that. Joey loved what I did with the album. And, uh, It's it's amazing. So, mm. you know, putting putting that band together as the rejects a couple years and then into the murder dolls, pretty much every member of the band were dudes that were friends of mine that I brought into the band for Joey. Joey's like, Trip, we gotta find people. I'm like, You're in Slipknot. I can't don't you know a lot of musicians? He goes, No, I don't know anybody. You you gotta find everybody. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I found the whole band. You know, I knew Wednesday, I knew Eric. And he, and which he knew Ben, which I got mm. into Ben through Eric. Obviously, I knew AC and Racy Shea I brought into the band in the Rejects. And then I brought Kirk, another guy, this guy Ian, who was the original bass player, mm. the first Rejects. So that's like a set, what, seven people that I brought into the band. So, like, you know, it's like, it, it's something, it means something. I was the casting director. Mm. Like, a casting director gets paid big bucks for yeah. a movie, right? But in a band, you're just it's a thankless thing. But Oh, no, no, not thankless, because Joey appreciated the guys. He's like, Trip, mm. find these guys. This is awesome. He loved it, you know. Mm. So we, we brought these guys in, and, um, you know, it's it's something that you see Bill, like A.C. Slade, like, made a press statement. Like, this is about five guys and 100 yeah, yeah. fans, right? Yeah. I saw that. Right. It is about five guys, but you forgot. There's a sixth guy there, bro. You know, it's like, there's a sixth guy, you know, the guy who played on the album and put the whole band together and mm. played the you know the leads and you know i tried to get ac in the band twice in mm. the original rejects joey's like yeah i don't want to get too that many guys from the band dope i tried to get him in the band right away and then right before we, we made wednesday the singer we needed a bass player I'm like let's get ac and joey said nope and i got eric you know mm. so ac could have been in any if it was up to me i would have put ac in earlier but so ac comes in when i exit and when i made the phone call to joey mm. and I, dude I, i can't do this tour i i gotta write these songs of wayne's mm. shadow zone i gotta do it i go i said just get ac you know i've been trying to get ac in the band just get ac mm. so like you know i don't he might have got him anyway but i did it was the first suggestion i made to him mm. so you know so murder dolls it's like it's i'm proud of that you know um, the second Murder Dolls album was a little, you know, different. You know, I, I felt like they, you know, kind of, remember mm -hmm. Marilyn Manson when he went to Mechanical Animals? Yeah. I felt like it was too soon, like, like, like too big of a change too soon. You know, it was like sometimes bands change too quick and then Manson reverted back to like more evil than I feel like Murder Dolls, you know, mm. you know, I, I agree with eight because AC was disappointed in the, in the Murder Dolls reunion. Mm. I was like, I kind of like, Felt, I felt what he was feeling like, ah, they should have just, it was eight years. There's mm -hmm. no need to experiment with new murder doll stuff. Like do what worked. And I, and I'm saying it was, it was great out. It was well written and they looked great on stage, but it was a different thing. It wasn't as campy. It wasn't as, wasn't mm -hmm. as fun. You know, it was like, it wasn't as like colorful. You know, I felt like they, they lost it. 
I wish I would have done something more retro, you know, mm. like I like I, I like as a fan say, I wish they would have got AC and Eric and Ben back. You know, I yeah. kind of I kind of I I was feeling AC at that point. Like, saying, like bro, like I feel you, you know, I kind of wish yeah. they would. But, you know, oh, well, what can you do? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, stuff also going on at the Murder Dolls when it comes to the re-release on vinyl and merchandise because, um, if I get it right, and also you mentioned it before, it is Joey's band and unfortunately he passed away um, last year and Wednesday is claiming that AC stole the brand's name a year before or during the time when Joey's uh, health issues went downhill and now, um, yeah, he's open... I don't know, merchandise store doing the uh, re-release stuff and Joey is, uh, not Joey, AC is saying, yeah, he's doing that because nobody was taking care of it and there was an option to do it. And Wednesday is saying again, yeah, but you did not inform Joey or any of the previous members. And from outstanding person, I'm like, uh, music business sometimes very weird, strange, and I can some sometimes understand views but on the other hand not that far for instance i mean i get the idea to reboot or rebuild a uh, a band so but um, if you have to steal the rights while the person you know and you i don't know how, how the contract was turning both uh, um, joey and ac but if he was ill or not it's a little bit like uh, i don't know you know and but when you say is claiming that and i'm not sitting there and like why just not open about it why is this money is it so important or, or what are, well yeah it's, it's i don't of, know I, i yeah i get I, ac's uh argument ac's statement his perspective it, it feel it sounds good right but it, it everybody something feels wrong about it something feels wrong like like yeah and it's unfortunate to use ac's own words where he mentioned Lords of the New Church. Did you hear that reference he did? Which reference? Lords of the New Church. Mm. He made a statement and he said, Lords of the New Church yeah. left their trademark go and a fan went and got it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah, you're right. They had to pay this fan to do Lords of the New Church. I'm like, why are you mentioning that? You're mentioning someone who was kind of a jerk who went in and got the trademark and then the band had to deal with this person that wasn't in the band because they got some legal loophole and they aha gotcha mm. gotcha gotcha so yeah it feels wrong but i mean like i i reached out to ac like dude you're doing a murder loss thing why don't you invite me out dude I, i was the one who put the band together there you and eric you know you know I, joey wouldn't know who you are if it wasn't for me you know mm. like like why not just invite me out show some goodwill here you know invite me out bro um, not that I want to sanction what he did, you know, because I feel maybe, you know, it was unfortunate. But, you know, I also understand Wednesday's point of view, too. Wednesday feels like, what the heck would have happened, you know, if Joey was alive and would have heard what AC did? Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. And of course, AC doesn't want to get asked that question because it's, there's no good answer to that. Like, what? Would he have said to Joey, ha ha, too bad. Ha ha, too bad to Joey Jordison. He's dealing with illness, medical problems, and, and addiction, and everything else he was dealing with. It's like, you know, I don't know. Um, it's a tough It's a tough one. But like, uh, to your point, it, it makes fans have to ch make ch choose sides, and it, which is go back to the static X thing. Why do you have to make fans choose sides And it's unfortunate, but 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 then again, even when Wayne was alive, him and Tony were battling in the press. Oh, yeah. You know, fans were like, uh, "I love them all. Why do I have to fight? I love all everybody. Stop fighting!" You know, it just happens. You know, Misfits got back together though. You know, so like, yeah, you know, I guess when there's enough money, you, you know, you can put, bury the hatchet. But yeah, it's 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 unfortunate um, that some things happen that way. Like to me, like communication, right? communication and working things out to everybody's benefit is the best thing you mm. know and i think that's what happened when you go back going i don't want to go back to the static x thing but when you said what the heck happened trip if you were involved in it it's a lack of communication and there was a certain point 2019 
even 2018, where I was like, text, dude, what's going on? Dude, what's going on? Dude, voicemail, what's going on? Dude, what's, oh yeah, uh, well, call me tomorrow, next week. It's like something was going on, but the little thing they were hanging out for me was, you remember that video they put out? They were like, we're calling for all our friends to be part of this. And they were yeah, calling. yeah, the first video. And, right, all these different famous people. And I was like, wow, that sounds pretty cool. I'd like to have Jonathan Davis sing on one of my songs. I'd like to have, you know, Corey Taylor or somebody sing on one of my songs. Maybe these guys, I should trust them. You know, they're they're doing this, these making these deals. And yeah, maybe yeah. So I was like kind of trusting and I shouldn't have been, you know, because they were, you know, it's just like, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know, you got to like, you know, stay involved. But I was, I kept calling and texting and like, I'm like, what's going on here, dude? And then nobody, everybody said no to them. Does that say anything like, oh, Wayne, weird Wayne mask thing? Nah, no, thanks. You know, like, did all everybody see that and be like, get turned off by it? You know, it's the only so, person. So, sorry to interrupt you. So uh, I remember that video when they said, hey, we want to reach out to different singers like Five Finger Death Punch, Corn, Disturbed, etc. And you said um, a couple of minutes ago that they denied the offer to sing the songs of Wayne to replace him during a Static X song, which would be uh, released on Project Regeneration. Get, uh, I just asking if I get it right, what you said before. Well, no, what I, what I said was they put that call out. Yeah. And um, they never told me what people said, but the point is if one of these singers yeah. wanted to do it, they would have been like, great. But nobody, to me, it's like, it seems like everybody's passed on it, yeah. you know? And, okay. I, and I get that vibe that everybody passed on it because when I said, hey, hey, you heard anything? You heard anything? Yeah, nope, nope, nope. Well, Al Jorgensen is definitely going to do it. Al Jorgensen was supposed to sing on one of my songs. So I had a song called Lamentation, which I'm going to be releasing in Project X. Mm. Lamentation. I want Al Jorgensen to sing on that song. He trip. I love this song. Tony was telling me I'm going to have Al Jorgensen sing on that song. So he ended up singing on a different one because, of course, there's someone else in the band that doesn't like me. So he was like, no, 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 let's, mm -hmm. let's do this. So, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I wasn't okay. privy to the, but but they did put a call out. And if they're going to let Al Jorgensen sing on it, they would have let a lot of other people sing if they wanted to. But but it's like, I, I to me, it seems like a lot of people passed on it. So. You know, it is what it is. But, uh, oh. but yeah, that first that first video you're talking about, that first yeah, yeah. trailer, it was like the first song was Road to Hell, a song I it was a Face Without Fear song. Mm. So, like, I brought it in, and me and Edsel worked on it. That was the first song you hear of the new Static X. The first song you hear on that Project, Regen Project uh, Regeneration teaser, mm. first song you hear, the first notes you hear, the first music you hear was written by Tripp and Edsel. Mm. Not, not Tony, you know, the, the other guys didn't weren't involved in at all. And then the next songs you hear are Trip Wayne songs, something of my own. So, like, the first couple songs you hear are songs that I co wrote that launched the band. So, I guess that means nothing to them, but it means something to me that sure. I helped launch first music people heard was a song that I wrote. And uh, I think it's, I think it's cool, you know. Mm. So, I'm not, I'm not going to let them forget about that. Yeah. And, I got to talk and I got to do, you know, podcasts. I'll be doing my podcast, mm. getting back to that. So, you know, I'm going to slowly get the word out and, uh, and I always welcome them. You know how AC did the announcement? Everybody's welcome, except for Trey. Everybody's welcome to partake of the murder dolls. Everybody's yeah, yeah. He went through this laundry list. Dude, you left somebody out. You left the, uh, you left somebody out, dude. It's, it's hurtful. You know, and it is hurtful. AC, AC should know better. You know, he's AC is a really good person. I've known him since 1991. He auditioned for my band Lovesick in 1991. Came into Manhattan, auditioned for my band Lovesick. And I've known him ever since. I got tight with him. We talked about relationship mm. problems. We talked about heartfelt things through the 90s. And then I joined his band, Vampire Love Dolls. Remember that you know that band? Yeah, yeah sure. I know know this band. Yeah, I was in that band for like three months after I auditioned for Marilyn Manson, which I auditioned for Manson in '96. Then I came out of that, and I said, "Oh, let me let me you know get my own band, but let me play with AC for a little." while. I played with Vampire Love Dolls for a little mm -hmm. while. And I love that music, but it, I just something didn't feel right. I wanted to do my own thing, mm -hmm. but um, so I've known AC for all this time. So it's like to 
forget about me mm. to like kind of like all right we're gonna just uh have a cabal against trip and, and uh, cancel him it's just you know it ain't right it ain't gonna yeah. stand it's, it's not gonna last the truth will the truth is powerful the truth is cleansing mm. the truth is it's uh it's releasing it just makes sure. it feel good so you might as well just like tony needs to call me up and be like bro sorry let's figure something out here you know it's interesting because uh, i want to close our interview and usually i'm asking um about the first mosh pit experience etc but uh, i want to let me say do something different and uh, ask you about if you could sit on a around the table with Edsel with Tony what would you say to them or at least what would be a good solution for both let me say sides sides well yeah well yeah pretty I mean pretty much what I said right just like dude you can't you can't keep this up it's just it ain't right you know it ain't right you know so like, come on bro You know, and I, I did actually do that with Tony. I flew out to L.A. and sat at a table with him, talked to him. He's like, dude, let's have a band meeting. Let's get. Every no, I said, you own Static X. I want to talk to you. You're the man. We have a history. So I insisted just me and him. We sat down and we had a heart to heart talk and we left bro hugging and everything. But my theory is he got out of that meeting, went back and that's like, ah, and then and they talked with the other guys. And I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what happened then, but all the good vibes I had with Tony and the bro hugs, I left there, him saying, you're going to play on the album. I want you to come play on the album. I want, to, I want you to fly out and play, I, I want you to play on the album. That sounded great. All right. I'm reconciled. I'm getting, you know, there was a, the, the lawyers that are, but then we talked and I thought it was going good. So it's been, it's, it's like, a, there's been these ups and downs. It's not this one delineation of like what happened in, 2019 because it's been there, there's been these waves of things are going good things are going bad but um but yeah so that's you know that's unfortunate so what i would say to them is like pretty much there's a famous commercial like a beer commercial like dude come on dude it's me you know remember han solo and return of the jedi when they're going to take down the uh deflector shield <laughs> you gotta be quiet and han solo like dude it's me me i'm still me i was carbon frozen for a little while but i'm out i'm out of carbon freeze it's me i'm still me so that's pretty much what i would say to them dude and of course um if you got the opportunity to meet ac and sit on a table which words would you share or at least um yeah maybe what would be a good solution between both of you Well, yeah, pretty much what I said, just like, dude, like, the same. Like, like, yeah, it's just unfortunate, you know, like, you know, you're doing this thing. It's just like, why do you got to make things awkward? You know, it's like, I feel like in our el like older age, you're going to look back like, wow, well, I'm sorry I did that. That was kind of wrong, dude. Like, dude, you know what we've been through, you know, we, we did, we've been through a lot together. What we've been through, and I'll chronicle this in my podcast and through, you know, the intervening months or years, whatever, like, like there's a story to be told. There's a dope story to be told, and it's not Edsel's version of dope. There's like a true dope story from when I joined and went to his apartment in 1997, September 90s. When I went to his apartment and I seen what he was working on, and I seen who he was working with, and then how we developed it there. I wasn't just like, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I'm just, hey, tell me where to show up. No, I was involved in some serious stuff. And I have some theories of what was going on at the time that I didn't even know, but then to the point of getting the record deal. So there's some interesting stories, how AC came into Dope and all those dynamics going into the Life album. And then there's some interesting stories that Ed sold. Of course, he doesn't want it to be known because it doesn't, it makes him, you know, not look that great. It mm -hmm. makes his judgment to be not that great, not this perfect businessman that did all these perfect decisions. It, It shows a human side like, hey, we all make mistakes like Kiss. Kiss did the elder. Kiss, you know, they, they did these weird things. There's mistakes you make throughout your career. Like, no regrets. He's got to keep this Edsel dope persona. No regrets. I have no re You got a lot of regrets, bro. And I can tell you what they are and we can talk about it because I've talked heart to heart with Edsel. And he's, uh, he was, I, I mean, to me, me and Edsel were close, closer than ever 
uh, from 2008 when he invited me on that tour bus mm -hmm. to, till he invited me to join Dope and be his business partner. We were close. We were sharing deep, heartfelt things. Like he said, dude, how can you be so positive? What you've been through? How do you keep a positive attitude? Because I'm going through this depression and he was asking me for some advice. I mean, that's heartfelt stuff. Mm -hmm. And now that we have podcasts and there, people can tell stories and get in depth, these are good stories. I mean, they're yeah. awesome stories, dope. What happened in the, the different eras of the band? It's a great, great stories. Not just like, oh, I'm putting a mask on and I'm doing this and oh, hey, it's nostalgia. Yeah, that's all great and everything. We're all nostalgic. We want to hear Push It and all the great songs. Mm. But uh, but there's people behind these things and you know there's people that struggle like Wayne struggled with drugs and alcohol. They don't talk about it. You know, mm. got to talk about it. You know. I wasn't there for Wayne's struggles, but I understand what it's like. I got people in my life that died of drug overdoses and suicide, and I understand the people who told me how Wayne was suffering. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk deeper about that stuff. So it's like these are real life things, and it's not all you know flowers and unicorns and rainbows and everything. Mm -hmm. and There's some you know things that are you know that are heartfelt. So yeah, I want to talk about those things. I mean, I would love the opportunity. Like I've reached out to AC, like, dude, it's me, you know, he, he, he does, he does appearance. I don't even have people. He's, he lives right in Jersey. He's probably like 45 minutes from yeah, me. Yeah. Like, you know, like I live right in Jersey. I go, bro, I'll probably run into him at the, you know, the Trenton punk rock flea market or something. He's like right there. Like I got people like, Hey, I'm going to the flea market. Well, if you see AC, tell him I said, hello. You know, I saw a hearse driving on the highway. I thought, is that AC? Is her, his hearse. Like, is that AC? Hey dude. Would you show me, uh, like, like you're going to wait till I'm dead and be like, oh, trip, rest in peace, God bless him. You know, he wants to say some good things about me while I'm alive, bro. You know, it's just like, we're, we're here, dude. We're here, mm -hmm. we're alive, and you know, we're, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. We have something to do with each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe to close our interview, very important for the viewers out there, new music coming up next year with, um, yeah, Face Without Fear, Project X, a new website coming up during the next days or weeks, and also your new podcast will be launched in, I don't know, also a couple of weeks or months. And something, at least what you said, that, you know, there are two sides, there's your side and the band side, or also with... Static X part one, Static X part two, however you want to call it. And that's just my opinion. I hope in the end it will be someday one or this chapter is more or less closed into good for both parties, I guess, from a per fan perspective. Um, that would be a good solution for everybody, I guess. And that's my goal. So, yeah. Trip, thank you very much for the interview, for the time. I appreciate it very much. And uh, definitely we'll look out for your future projects. And all right. Thank you very much. I'll be back when I have something more to talk about. We'll do yeah, sure. Again. Sure. Awesome. Again. Bye. Take care. Gosh, good passion, you know, for the passion of music.